Okay, so we're now looking at Salut de Mort by Edward Elgar, and this is originally a violin piece that's been transposed or transcribed across for tuba and the piano, which originally it was piano and violin, so there's not much of a difference. The big challenge in this one was first of all the key, so to start with what I done was I transposed by hand, took it from E flat major and a E major, sorry, and transferred it over to E flat major. The reason why I done that was because E major is quite a difficult key to play on a brass instrument and um, transposes across the seven sharps if you add the three sharps. An easy way of, for brass musicians to transpose from ba bass clef into treble clef on an E flat instrument is to just simply add three sharps. So if something's an E flat major, it becomes C major. It is just an easy transposing trick that um, a lot of brass musicians use when going between keys. If they've learned the one clef, they'll use that trick. What works either way, you can add three flats to treble clef and read it as bass clef if it's written in E flat and you can add three sharps to bass clef and read it as treble clef. It's quite handy that way. Um, so first of all, took it out, wrote, wrote it all out as a violin part and there's not much of it that really altered really. So I'll just play this opening phase which was completely unaltered. Um, dynamics were all left and there's quite a few contradictions in Elgar's original score that I'll have a look at actually in the writing of the blog that's going to go with this. But, um, so I've changed that so the piano and the um, instrument match up as much as possible. There are some orchestral swells that were written, or some piano swells, that work separately to the solo lines, but most of the time they were starting a bar or two after for some reason. And again, some of the dynamics and things are a bit contradictory. So let's just play the opening part. So that complete section was unaltered, other than um, taking it down to E flat to make it more playable in the instrument, dynamics are last written, all the um, notes are written. There's a few little um, staccato and then to mute notes like in the third bar, and it repeats again when this phrase comes back. And it's just little accents that I've left in, although it's slurred across, they wanting that note to slur across, and then just come off. Um, so it be da da di da yum, tom tom, and then that third note there, it's three A flats together, just a little bit more of a um, push on it there. So I've left that in because it's quite a nice effect to have, although it's not, you don't want to really overly do it. We're doing the flow of the piece of the lyrical, smooth, so we've just left that in there as the composer originally intended. So if we take it now from the second time bar into A, this section again, mostly unaltered except the last bar. So let's move through that. Too high, or it wouldn't sound quite as nice. It sounds a bit straining. It works a little bit better now that, um, or with the flat there, it works quite well up an octave. This is the next phrase. So we've got these notes that transfer, and they just accompany the main line. So the main line then takes over the tune, and the violin had this overtone, over hanging note. D -F -E. So I brought that down because it wouldn't work up there on the tube. It does work, it does sound, but it would be a little bit too overpowering. I feel it would be a little bit too overpowering. That's what I've written instead of. Penis and we could have to work really hard. It just wasn't wouldn't be complimentary. So let's finish off that little phase from the fortissimo there. Mm-hmm. 
So looking at this bar here at D, which is what's marked, we've left it up the octave. It's really a straining note up there, it's an A flat. Up the top, this one here. And it just really, it's quite difficult to get um, on the instrument, especially jumping up from something. So a lot of rehearsals required there, but it is possible. So I've left it in, and it gives that the whole piece is moving towards there. So look from C again, you'll see how that works. So it works up to this bar. <laughs> of that phrase it's in the middle um, when it, when you do hit it it's quite nice and I've left it up there for that reason I'll go over a little bit more how we can try and strengthen that note in the rehearsal techniques but it's possible in the tuba it's probably the highest note that we're asked to play as an instrumentalist that features in the Vaughan Williams concerto on the um, cadenza and it features in the Philip Spark um, concerto towards the end it's got a sort of horn part soaring over the top that comes out in the tuba part so we'll look at it there later on in the week um, as well and how it features in the repertoire. So I left it in because it is a note there and it's quite a bright sound the one it really pierces out when and rings out quite well when hit. So the next phrase I took down an octave I think from the original. And I think no this is how it's written, it's written down here. It goes right down in the bowels of the um, register. That last note was quite difficult to get, but again, it's possible. Playing it piano there, and it would just sit across everything else that's going on as the violin would. Um, there's not much else being altered there, it's as it was written, um, mostly. So, there's no major real concerns when I was doing this um, arrangement, and it would work quite well for the tuba. There's various recordings of other people doing it. Um, I've just changed the key is all the main thing that makes a difference. It doesn't make any tonal difference to the work. A couple of bars have been required to come down an octave, which I've done. Um, that's just made it a little bit more playable, a little bit nicer in the ear. And a few of the notes that are left in, I've decided to leave them in. Although they're difficult, I think they're worth keeping them in that octave. So that's the rehearsal techniques, or the, sorry, the arranging techniques that I've used on Salud Amor. Um, I hope that gives a little bit of an insight into that.